The lights are off and the way they yeah, go. Extremely loose. He's managed to hold on. They get he missed the, the complete bit. <laughs> He's crazy the other stuff. Side, Freitas is on the grass on the info for four. He slices through. He tags her. From the Australian gold country rises Mount Panorama, traversing up its southern face across the summit and down its eastern slope is a concrete lined thin ribbon of asphalt, tying a couple very long straights, a pair of tough 90 degree left handers and a few other tricky curves to navigate and you have the four miles of racetrack known as Bathurst. This morning, Apex Online Racing has come here to kick off season six of its Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. Good day, mates, and welcome to the Global Sim Racing Channel's Countdown to Green. Up in the press box to bring you our word's eye view is yours truly, Bill Soup John, joined by Sean Crackers Ambrose. Down in the production van is the best director in sim racing broadcasting, Amjad Yaman, and Dougie Beard is the camera guru. If you brought cyberspace into your place, then over the next 15 streamy award-worthy minutes, GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to fully appreciate this unique doubleheader format of a 40-minute opening feature followed by a 25-minute inverted sprint. And of course, all the talked-about racing action will immediately follow, and you'll be able to see it live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Crackers? John Venn would have had a hard time diagramming this event. To win, you must first go fast and finish. To go fast, you must race close to the walls. But if you race close to the walls, you probably won't finish. It just, it's not logical. But someone's got to win, right? Someone does have to win this race, Soup. It is great to be back here with the AOR on a Friday evening. Uh, Mount Panorama is, for all intents and purposes, a street circuit soup. Large sections of the course are lined by temporary concrete walls that transforms public roads and house driveways to an unforgiving four-mile racetrack. You know, the V8 supercars are probably most well-known for calling this place home, but thanks to iRacing, you can find all types of cars running on this virtual version of this 23-turn track. That's right, 23! If the name didn't make it obvious, one of the distinguishing aspects of this place is its elevation change. Up and down the mountain, you'll be dealing with rises and dips all over the place. The biggest worry for the drivers early on will be a track blockage. After that, the fastest drivers will be those that dare to race close to the race ending track boundaries. But uh, to really give you a feel just how scary it is around this place, let's go on board for the GSRC Lap Guide. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC Formula Renault 2.0, so let's do a lap around Bathurst. Up first is Hell Corner, but it's deceptive on the surface. It's a simple 90-degree left turn, but your exit is critical to a good lap time. That's because you're now climbing up the mountain straight, so you won't be lifting for a long while. Drafting is likely to play a big part along this stretch, so expect to see some strategy games between drivers. As you come over the hump, hold to the left and spot your brake marker for Griffin's Bend. This is a turn where overtakes are probably going to take place. It's also a turn that tends to induce understeer, making it easy to clatter that outside curb too hard and chuck the car into the wall. Quickly, you've got to switch sides and get the car turned in for the cutting. This kink makes for tricky braking, and then the steep uphill incline to the second half will mean momentum is important. After that, you'll round quarry, making sure to keep your foot in it and taking a nice wide arc around the bends. At the top will be Reed Park, followed by Frog Hollow, and then Solomon Park. The downforce of the Renault means this typically tricky section becomes a flat-out blast. Only the loss of grip from the crest of McPhillamy means a tiny lift to get you through the top of the hill. From here on out, it's a lot tougher. Balance the car on the brakes down through the S's and try to get it slowed up enough for the dipper. You can see these dramatic elevation changes actually cause a front wheel to go into the air momentarily a couple times. If you made it through that bit clean, make sure to line up the curved entry into forest elbow. This awkward downhill braking makes it extremely difficult to get the exit you need out of this important corner. Ideally, a late apex will get you the launch you need to carry your speed onto the Conrad straight. Yet again, drivers will be using the draft either to find more lap time or save more fuel depending on the race conditions. As we approach the chase, things might get a bit spicy. The kink on entry is easily flat out, but when you're approaching at 150 plus miles an hour, hitting your brake marker accurately is a hard ask. 
This will probably be one of the most popular places for a pass all day, but the crest right after the apex often makes it easy to slide off the track into the grass, so beware. As you come around the bend, swing the car off to the right and set up for Murray's Corner. The best advice for this bend is to not get too aggressive on the inside curb. It tends to upset the car horribly. Hopefully, you've kept it on track and can now finish a lap around Bathurst. I'm Jed Yaman on the wheel, Joe Peak on the mic, taking us around Bathurst. Hey, this will be the third season that GSRC has been invited to cover the AOR Formula 0 Championship. The first campaign we covered was season four, when the champions came down to the last race between points leader Uni the Eunice Lavasi and the man just behind him, Jeroen the Earthquake. The Earthquake was able to steal the championship away from the unit in a thrilling, if not controversial, sprint race finale. Not to be outdone, for season five, the AOR gave us not two, but a three car battle. Again, does not decided until that final sprint race. Let's take a look at how the final driver standings came out for season number five. Coming into the season finale, it was Rene Osterkamp's championship to lose, and lose it he did. After a poor performance in the feature, he still, all he needed to do for the Sim RC driver, all he needed was to finish anywhere up near the front. But an instant of DQ opened up the door for Christian to catch of Red Devil Sim Racing and Vortex Online's Christian Coke to fight it out. When the English dust all settled at Brands Hats, it was to catch who was awarded the crown by two points over Coke and three over Ostercap. With a championship as close as that, emphasis it is so important about those bonus points that can be awarded for pole or for fastest lap or even the often overlooked zero incident result. Now, let's go ahead and look at the team standings. They were not quite as a dramatic. A pair of former champs teamed up for Aperture Racing. Kerry Nolden finished fourth in the driver's points and Phil, uh, Phil Reed came in sixth enough to give Aperture the team crown. Red Devil Sim Racing had Daniel Morris who finished in ninth in the driver points. He was paired up with to catch the champion, but a slow season start was too much for them to overcome and Red Devil casts into second there. If Michael Mittner could have completed the full season, it would have been really good combination. That Mittner Coke cocktail would have been really potent. Vortex takes third. Crackers, we uh, the double header format returns for season six, and pretty much as it was, just a few minor tweaks here and there. What does the uh, series look like here? Soup, let's talk about that here. The AOR Season 6, Round 1 of 12 today. For our new viewers and our people coming back, let's cover everything real quick. Now, we've got two events for you today. It is the feature race and the sprint race, and two of those combined equals two drops. So you, get, uh, you get two events to drop this season. This is the Formula Renault 2.0. If you don't know anything about this car, well, you should. It's got about 2,000 cc. It's a four-cylinder, 16-valve, naturally aspirated motor, and it cranks out at about 210 horsepower. It's very light. It's very, very fast, and it's wicked fun here around the mountain. 40% fuel today, and that will be a factor in the feature race. A, a pit stop will be needed. And we have, again, two races today. Now, the, stand, the start today will be a standing start. Soup Mount Panorama is very, very tough on uh, cold tires. First time you get up the mountain there, uh, and uh, as you get uh, basically out of the cutting and through Griffin's Mount, it's going to be very, very scary on those cold tires. No fast repairs. That is a big deal, uh, especially if you get in trouble up there on that mountain we keep talking about. Incident cap, yes, and it does vary uh, between the feature and the sprint race. Now, the weather today, uh, it's carried over from yesterday's practice. It's uh, overcast, about 82 degrees. 82 degrees on track. Now that's Fahrenheit. You Europeans can do the conversion for me if you don't mind. Soup, why don't we look at the event details here for the first race? It, it is a lone, uh, lone qualifying session, three laps. So your best lap of the three will get you on the grid and determine where you start. Now the feature race is 40 minutes. It's a large fuel window, okay? A, a large pit stop window, not necessarily fuel but you will need that stop to finish this 40 minutes. And uh, the incident cap for the feature race is 16. And that is one less than last season is uh, no half point option this season. So basically if you get over 16 X's, 
you hit that mark, you will disappear from the session. You'll be disqualified. And uh, that about goes it for the event yep. details today, Soup. Big, we'll big start to the season here at this track. Well, we'll come back. We'll talk about the sprint race here on our before we actually bring that one up. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the past champions that we've had. Again, we've been here for three seasons, but this championship has been around for a while. Looking at the past champions, you can see that we've had five names returning for season six. The very first champion, Kerry Nolden, his aperture racing partner, Phil Reed, is back along with Sean Bonsoir-Goda, Christian Koch, and Christian Decatch. As we look at the former team champions here, with this being a summer season, it reminds me of what my dad's saying for sim racing success went, and it went like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The path to sim racing championship is a hard road to trod. Now that's T-R-O-D, trod. And what that meant was the T stands for talent. You can't win a crown if you don't have that. The R stands for resilience. Things will go wrong during the season. You must be resilient. You must keep going. You can't let bad rep ruin your season. The O stands for opportunity. You must have real world schedule that affords you the opportunity to sim race. And the D, that stands for dedication. If you do have the opportunity to race, you must be dedicated and invest that time to actually sim racing. Now, the large majority of the AOR members hail from this planet's northern hemisphere, which puts these 12 races right smack dab in the middle of summertime. I think drivers with O-N-D, that's opportunity and dedication, will be in short supply. If a talented, resilient driver can find some O and some D, he or she could be this season's season six, six championship, Sean. Always hard to have a good uh, run in the summertime, stuff to do. Now, I know you spent some time out on the track, uh, a little, uh, little rough out there in the Formula Renault? <laughs> well, it was for me. <laughs> no, listen, hey, this this track is a lot of fun because, you know, it, actually, even for the novice driver, if you can figure out a couple of sections of this track, you can have fun here. You can you can get close to the fast guys. When I say close, within about four or five seconds. Uh, but you can get out of here and you can have a little fun. It, it, the big problem is, is that, you know, a, oh, maybe uh, just under a half of this track is getting up and over the mountain and that's really really where the where the uh the carnage ensues the most uh, the worst thing that can happen at the top of the mountain and where you'll see in the s's is if a car gets offline and gets spun around absolute chance there can be total blockage of the track it gets very very narrow down through their soup and uh, we've seen it happen in other races and other class of cars where cars will get turned around up there on the top of the mountain, and it's impassable. It can cause quite a roadblock and quite a mess uh, when you're running in tight quarters. Now, on the opposite side of that is you have such a large track here uh, with some really, really good long flat out runs, you're probably gonna see the field spread out pretty quickly. And uh, uh, if that happens, then well, you'll get a chance to race a little bit, and not have to worry so much about the guy next to you, but more so about the track that's in front of you. I was talking before we went live with Scott Newton about what type of setup it was, and I really said it gets so involved that I have no clue. He was talking about the actual wind direction. I can't remember. He said, "Well, we have a we have a tailwind going over the trend, then when then coming down the hill, it's going to be helpful." So uh, he was cons actually considers yeah. the, the which way the wind blows, how he sets up the car. I was trying to pay attention. Then he mentioned something about unless it's Tuesday and you wear neighbors wearing pink shoes and it's all <laughs> nothing. I go, what? You know, so I well, we'll see how it plays deal. out. Here's a big deal about the wind. It's it's blowing uh, west at 18 miles an hour. Oh. So, and and that is that's pretty gusty. That can have an effect on the car, a tremendous effect on the car and setting up and playing to that wind. Very, very important uh, as this track rolls. Uh, with that westerly wind soup, uh, what you're basically going to see is a huge tailwind on these cars as they head down the back straight, the Conrad straight, into the chase. And, uh, well, uh, your, your braking line uh, with a little added uh, RPMs through there is going gonna, is gonna to change a little bit. Uh, how you get through, uh, through the chase, you'll, you'll slow down just a bit there. With a big field that we have in a standing start, let's go ahead and bring up, even though qualifying is still going on, let's go ahead and bring up our qualifying grid right now so if we get paid a bonus, we can get through all 35 names that are on the starting order. Our pole sitter, this is a surprise, Jean-Francois Godin sitting inside of Mark Usher on the front row. Sean? 
All right, Soup. And then row two is going to be Oscar Mangan and Christian Koch. Third row, Aricio Tellis back for his sec uh, sophomore season with Christian Holstein outside of him. All right, and then it's going to be Renee Osterkamp and Charlie Summers on row four. Row five is the defending champion, Christian Tkach and Scott Newton. All right, row, uh, row six is going to be Adam Tierney and Michael Mintner. In the Baker's Dozen spot is Kerry Nolden just inside of Phil Reed. Row eight, Jeroen de Cortel and Daniel Morris. Number nine row is going to be filled up by Evan R.T. Emre and Knut Martinson. Row 10, Josh Thompson, Eunice Vastamaki. Hidden Blackjack, it's Lauren Sudden Strike to Reich and the Double Duck Spock, Erka Lindstrom. I believe Eunice is a newcomer here, Sue. Uh, <laughs> let's see, we go back to row 11, and that is going to find Lawrence to Reich. Or, no, you did that one, Sue. I'm sorry. Uh, Andy Cowie, Bruno Dometer, uh, row 12. 25th and 26th, Patrick Jung and Odd Jonas Villeman. Row 14, going to be Alexander Waldo and Stephen Ash. Alexander Trumbull back in the 29th spot. Sylvia Hurt in 30th. All right, sir. 31st going to be 31st going to be Rolf Just. 32nd, Jordy Lopez Jr. And three more drivers round out our field. Manuel Hoyer, Lee Robinson, and Sara Dove back in the 35th position. The last three drivers did not put in qualifying times. Actually, the last four did not. Let's see if they're actually out there. I see that Robinson is out there. Hoyer is out there as well. Jordy Lopez is out there. Not sure if Sara. I don't think Sara has gridded up yet. Keep an eye on the driver sitting in the second position. Yeah, Jean-Francois Godot is a former champion, a veteran of the series, sitting on the pole. Mark Usher is the hot shoe we have to keep an eye on. Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows, because the horses are out of the barn. And season number six of the Apex Online Racing Formula World Championship is underway. It is the French-Canadian Jean-Francois Godin leading them on the mountain straight right behind Mark Usher. Third place is going to be Oscar Mangan. Mangan and Usher now moving to the inside as they try to get around Godin. They force, oh, they touch right away. Godin gets bumped by Usher. Godin is off. I don't think he hit the wall. We'll come back and look at that one a little later. Up in front, that has let Mangan take the lead. We don't know how much damage there is to Usher's car. He's fallen back to third position. Coke, Christian Coke, has got up into second. Rounding out your top five, A.C. Oteas and Christoph Holstein. Well, Jean-Francois Cotin loses 27 spots, Soup. No damage on the car, nothing I'm seeing here immediately. Maybe a little bit on the right front wing. Don't give up on him yet. He can take some of the sting out of that. If he can stay on the lead lap and get a lead lap finish, he'll be get a good spot on the pole. I can report that Sara Dove did take the grid, but she just nosed it into the wall. Now we have a spin from Holstein. Holstein put it in the wall. We'll come back and review all of this a little bit later. Actually, we might get a lot of this during the break between the races. Holstein looped the car around. He nosed it in hard. He's going to lose some positions as well. Yeah, he took the toe soup up there on the top of the mat, was blocking the track, had to get out. More contact I hear back there. Looks like Adam Tierney has had trouble. They are dropping faster than... Oh, my goodness, and Tierney kicks, collects Kerry Nolden. There's going to be too much for us to review. What you want to do is make sure you come back for the... Uh, break between the races and we'll try to get all this done when we have more time honestly to cover it all we'd miss too much of the action right now many top tier drivers falling out the big incident Sean happened up front another driver spins that's a yellow car oh they're off this is Jung is off there's another car in the grass odd Jonas Vilman is off and they have completed lap one is all that's going on he showed up last season at the very end. Oscar Mangan is going to get credited with leading the first lap. A very attrition-filled first lap as it claimed more drivers than we can document. And Soup, the the incident with Tierney back on the Con Conrad Strait, that was weird. His car just got offline in the middle of the track. It wiggled and then it, it spun off track and, and Nolan got him, got him as he was coming by both of those cars out early. 
So, let's take a breath, set your top five for you right now. It's Oscar Mangan, second place Christian Koch. Now, we talked about Usher maybe having some issues. The car looks pretty good as he's racing back there. You are on board with Mark right now in that blue machine, racing in third. It's only about a second back to Charlie Summers. Now, there's a new driver. We'll keep an eye on him. Certainly having a nice showing so far. AC Otelius in fifth. Let's go back a little bit farther. Scott Newton in a battle for six with Rene Osterkamp. Osterkamp right, in that yellow little, machine. Now we've got a little heat in the tire soup as we make our way back down the mountain. Watching the back end of the field. They're getting through Pass the S's. For the lead. Here we go. This is Magnet. He was just gobbled up. There's just no way to defend going into the chase. Now, this is interesting, though. If he can hang on here a little bit, the chase kind of veers off, and then it comes back. Yeah, I thought he might have a chance, and he was able to hold on. Mangan able to hold on, fending off Coke. Coke loses momentum. That's going to let Mark Usher elbow his way up in there as they work down into Murray's corner and move up into second position. Mark Usher, Coke falls back to third, Sean. Boy. Good, good racing up there early. Yeah. Let's document some of the big names that have had trouble. Tierney oh, has had big trouble. Tr big trouble just now out of Murray's corner. Oh, it's Knut Martinson involved. Oh, my goodness. Martinson is on his hat. Who did he get? Oh, it was on the outside. It was Lord Sudden Strike to right. Martinson was trying to make a move on the outside of the Yeah, the DeRike, elbow. DeRike got a lot of curb there, Soup, and that upset his car, and I honestly think it pushed him out the right, out to the right and got him into Martinson. We hear more close mm. contact going on. DeRike is still racing. He's in 27th position. Martinson, hard to continue racing when your car is upside down. Yeah, that's... Boy, he had to take the toe in. Oh, wow. A lot of attrition here early soon. Well, we thought there would be, but we didn't think it would involve so many top-named drivers. And I'm telling yeah. you, it's it's so hard. One of the things we do, uh, full disclosure, as commentators, we listen for damage, and cars are just banging off the walls and everywhere. I imagine there's a lot more cars out there that have suffered some damage, Sean, that we haven't looked at. Look at this battle now for P2. This is Usher. Oh, it's P3. This is behind. This is the... Oh, look at this. The Coke. newcomer. Charlie Summer. Inside of Coke. Yeah, Summer bringing the fight. To get under the uh, the bridge. Uh, I'm sorry, the bridge there. They're heading down into the chase. Oh! Oh, here we go. A little hokey-doke, a little dipsy-do there from Coke trying to do the up and under, but it didn't work. Summer fends him off. We talked about this being a summer series. Well, maybe that's going to play into Charlie's favor right now as he's worked his way up to third. That was a nice move by Charlie. Uh, he is up five spots, Soup, and uh, he's he's running it out right now. Uh, got the uh, one of the fastest laps of the race, faster than the two guys in front of him. Usher puts in a lot, or I'm sorry, Usher puts in a lot of practice. Though Soup uh, ran with him some yesterday. Uh, I think he was up to something like 80, 80 laps here uh, during that four-hour practice session. Talk about your fastest lap of the race. That belongs right now to Scott Newton, a 2.02.9. Oh, and our leader is off in the wall, I think. Oh, that's yeah, going to give it, it back to Usher. Mangan got loose, and now he's going to lose it. Now he, that's, that goes by. That's Summer moving up into second. We're going to look at this one on board of Mangan. The car looks pretty healthy here. I'm watching as he's still racing. Not sure if he got in the wall, Sean. What do you think? Oh, yeah. No, he got it. He Point. got it indeed. I think he flat spotted it just right, though. I'm not seeing any damage on the car. He's chasing Charlie Summers now. Yeah, when you talk about flat spot, what he's talking about, he Ooh. kind of pancaked it in there perfectly so that the front right and left hit at the same time. Man, he is all over Charlie. Guess you cannot have a front, right, and left. What I meant to say, the left side tires. And Teus has this been bumped. Maybe we can get that one as well. Christian Koch just got into Teus, bumped him into the wall. Is he able to continue? It looks like he's still racing. Boy, these mm. Renaults are fragile. I cannot imagine that some of the stuff. Watch this. Now that's Teus out in front. I think Teus, same same thing. Maybe got a little fortunate there with the way he hit the wall. 
Have we missed it? Did we? Oh, maybe maybe we've missed it here. Is that yeah, poke out in front has already happened? Okay. So that's all right. We get we'll we we'll get it for so much stuff going on here. Ooh. Cowie has just put it in. Mark, this uh, is for Charlie elbow. Summers. Charlie Summers is up to the lead. He's in the lead. Oh. Here we go, and he's going to be able to close the door. <laughs> Oh, but he gets a little bit wide. That's going to let Usher come back at him. Usher in the dark blue car. Here comes. He's back from the grave. Oscar Mangan working on the outside as they go through Hell Corner. And now, wow. look, now a pass. Now they come down. Here it comes one more time. Side by side. Cialis Bathtubs on the mountain straight. I think the preferred position right now is going to go to the red car. That is Summer. Usher tries to make it work. They make contact. Of course they did. And they continue. More cars slide in there. That's Newton who gets collected. The rest of the cars, the track is almost blocked. There's room just to slide through. Uh, and the rest of the traffic seems to make it through. And Charlie had to tow, Sue. So let's look at the replay. This is just way, way too much aggressive going on in that corner. And Usher was already involved. I'm not putting the blame anywhere, but Usher was already involved in the incident that took out uh, who was it of, of early that he got involved in there the driver had trouble on the very first lap. Godin. He was involved with the Godin incident. So once again, boy, a lot of stuff going on there in Quarry. Let's catch our breath again and see if we can set the stage now. Who is left? Our leader, he's back. He got bumped off. He is back. It's Oscar Mangan. Christian Koch now racing in second. Isio Talias, he's been involved in some problems. He's in third. A battle back here for fourth position. This is Michael Mittner. Battle to for catch. the lead, Sue. Sue. Koch takes the lead. Down Koch to the chase, him. but he gets it off course. He loses it. Allows Mangan to get by. There goes Mangan. Back to the lead. Coke brings it back from the Australian Alfalfa. Okay, we got to Mittner and to catch running in fourth and fifth. We go back. Phil Reed started in 14th. He's up to ninth, running in sixth. We talked about the yellow car of Osterkamp in seventh position right now. Daniel Morris in eighth. Then you go back to ninth spot, which is going to be. There we go, Evan Emery. And then behind Every, here's another newcomer, Jonas Al Vastamaki. Nice showing from Jonas. Started 20th, up 10 spots. There is his banging. Knut Martinson is. He's back again. Is this. Okay. Not sure he actually could have come back. I think he just took another toe. Boy, Christian to catch really suffering trying to get around here. Uh, just gave up uh, six to Renee Osterkamp. Daniel Morris now closing on him. Looks to get by, and Christian nursing that car around. Uh, right front damage seems to have it way off pace. Yeah, here's the good news, Sean. For all the attrition we've saw, we've been lucky. We have not had a track blockage, which can so often happen here. We almost had one there on that last incident. Yeah, we've had a couple of close calls, but yeah. uh, not not totally blocked. Thank you. Now it looks like John Francois Godin is back out there. Oh, something has just happened to him. And it looks like he had some connect. Remember, he was your pole sitter. He got caught in uh, the quarry incident early on. All he needed to do was finish on the lead lap. You could get a good starting order for the sprint race, but now he's had to call it a day or at least a race. Sean, so often the case, finishing on the lead lap is a, is a, a tough thing to do here, but at least with this four-mile track, if you can just keep it clean, you got a good chance of of getting a, a re good regrade position. Soup, uh, you hit the nail on the head, buddy, if you can just keep it clean. If you can keep it in the gray, 
and off the walls and you have a wonderful opportunity to stay on the lead lap here you don't have to be the fastest car on the track to set yourself up for a really nice run in the, in the sprint race okay now our director shows that christian to catch is coming in we believe this is a scheduled stop, not damage related. He's just coming oh, in. Oh, no, no. He had damage. Oh, did he so, really? Yeah, no, no. Christian had, had significant damage on the right side of that car. But I am glad you brought the pit stops up because now we've got about uh, 13 and a half laps left. And I think the window's wide open right now. I, I think it is open and I think things are about to heat up on pit lane. They will need to make, if you're new to the series, they will need to make one stop here in this feature race, the 40 minute event. No stops for the sprint that will follow. Christian to catch now. His time in the box, so Sean, wasn't bad. Nine and a half seconds. From what I, that, that usually indicates, that's about five seconds longer than it normally would be. He must have had to put on a, a probably a nose cone or something. Usually the stops oh. will run about four and a half to five. Yeah, so trouble for Andy Cowie, the milkman, uh, was sitting there back in 20th. He spun it down in the cutting and uh, had to get the car turned around. One car got by. It was Silvio Hurt. He was stopped there and lost a tremendous amount of time, but does right the ship. Looking to see Scott Newton. Looks like he is out of the race. Charlie Summer is out. Canute Martinson, Jeroen de Quartel, Lauren Sudden Strike to Reich. All big names. Kerry Nolden. Sara Dove had trouble early. Adam Tierney. 35 drivers took the starting grid. At least 10 of them are off track, and I do think do not think they'll return. Mark Usher has called it a day. Soup, here's a really good battle yeah, for 11th place. He, I don't know if you caught this. Joel Lopez loses it. Oh, right in front of Manuel Hoyer. Boy, Aye. they all got around him. Did you, wow. Uh, Jordy was racing there. He was in front of Domiter and Hoyer and then spins it in hell. Yep. Look at that going around. Now we've seen that maybe... Mittner is in the pit lane. Has he had an issue? Let's see. Yep, Mittner had a spun, had a spin. And he collected Renee Osterkamp, the yellow car. That was a crunching blow for both of those. They will not be able to return. Sean, do we still have time to enter this thing? I think we could get a top 10 if they let us in now. <laughs> yeah, well, I <laughs> maybe soup. I just don't see either of those, because they had to take the toe. You can see them right there. I don't think either of those guys are coming back. These are huge. I, if you're new to the series, you don't realize these are just big-name drivers getting taken out like a sniper getting them. Boom, boom, and then a little bit later, boom. Well, Oscar Mangan is your leader, and, uh, well, he's starting to pull away, so... And he's not, he had an issue too. It's lucky that he's still out there racing. He really had a tough contact. Coke is in second. Acio Tellez in third. And you Mittner, all the was, back to Mittner was in fourth. Mittner and Osterkamp were running fourth and fifth. They both took each other out. That moves Phil Reed up a couple more spots now. He's in fourth. Up yeah. 10 spots. <laughs> In fourth and being chased by Daniel Morris. Morris giving a giving him a good run here. I, th I think when it's all said and done, I think the winner is going to be Mount Panorama. That's the that's the car that's doing. That's the track that's doing. Oh no! And as we look at that, Reed just got very loose. I think he just put it in the wall at uh, out of hell. I was a little bit behind there. Now I come back. Reed is still out in front. I spent half of this race, Sean. Again, more full disclosure. Or half of this race I spent on replay trying to go back and yeah. see if I could see what was going on. Just, uh, yeah, as Richard Arn just said in the chat, there is cars everywhere. <laughs> Oh, 
Howie has just backed it into the wall right in front of Joss Thompson. I think Cowie is going to have to leave. Yeah, Cowie, Cowie's off. He had more trouble, and he is now in the pit soup. I think he's giving this one up. Still only one car that has made us made a stop as we're looking at Alexander Valdo. This is a battle here with Christian to catch. Now to catch, why he is back there? He's made a stop. He's the leader of all the cars who have pitted. Let's keep an eye on that red car up to catch. If I know Christian, he'll take his time. They're coming to the elbow here. To catch will just take his time. Negotiate through 18 and 19 and then get it done as they head. I guess this would be they're going down now. Yeah, now Christian uh, had some damage, got it repaired on the pit stop. He did a good job of nursing the car around the track, lost a lot of time, but he is on cycle with his pit stop suit. Nobody else has come in really to make a stop. Joshua Thompson has come in. He's several positions back behind to catch. The leaders remain the same. It is about a one and a half second lead. Oscar Mangan back to Christian Koch. Koch, a veteran of the series. Mangan, not so much. And with a pit stop to come, that's always a learning curve for newcomers. Let's give you a little bogey time maybe between Mangan and the guy that he was racing with would be to catch about 40 seconds. I think that's pretty safe to say that Mangan should be able to get in and out. I don't think 40 seconds is enough time for to catch to get all the way around, but we'll see. Yeah, going to be going to be oh. tough to to pitch that pick that up. He's got to depend on a little bit of uh well, a little bit of misfortune on the guys ahead of him. 12 drivers yet to pit, 24 drivers still, well, let me correct myself, I racing very slow to update, 22 drivers still on the lead lap, I think maybe 21, the last one being Christoph Holstein, now Holstein qualified 6, had some problems, his goal right now, Sean, we've done this enough to know, all he wants to do is stay on the lead lap, put him up front for that sprint race. I like Christoph's movies, good yeah. actor. Oh, that's Waltz. Okay, sorry. Okay. You saw what I did there, Sue? I did, I did. <laughs> that's a great race in the day here at Mount Panorama. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm scanning the course right now, and it, it, the car is still having trouble navigating uh, the S's here on the top of the mountain. Silvio Hurt uh, was really struggling getting off the power and getting on the brakes. The car was sliding around just a bit. Just gets his way there out of Forest Elbow. Setting up for the long Conrad straight. Got a traveler behind him, Josh Thompson. That is a battle for position there, Sue. It would be nice. It seems like I, I know we've covered two or three, but I don't remember too many successful passes being covered on screen. Here's one right here. Let's get it done, boys. That's how you race here at Mount Panorama. As all about the uh, draft there, Josh gets a great run on him, gets the car slowed down in time to make that tough turn uh, up through the chase. Bruno Dominer in and out. He's going to come out second of all the cars who have pitted. To catch, still your top runner of pitting cars. Yeah, Alexander. Uh, oh, and Coke. Oh, trouble. Coke just spun it around. Walled it, wallops the wall with oh. a wall up there. He's lost his tail. Watch this. The car comes around and he wallops the wall with a wallop. Gets back on course right in front of Vasil Tellus, and here it is now. And that is I, uh, coming out of Sulman Park there and, and starting into the S's, and he just loses it, Sue. And he had All to by be, himself. He had to be so scared, too, because that's such a blind spot to be. He gets it going. That's going to cost him. Now, that repair, I think a, a rear wing can be done. I think that takes a little bit longer to fix than a front wing. Let's stay on this right now as actually he comes in. 
He's going to give that position. Aisio Tejas goes by. So he comes in. Coke was running in second position at the time. Our leader is in. Our leader is in. But again, Mangan was involved in some incidents, Sean. It's very possible that he might... Oh, well, as I say that, that looks like a pretty fast stop. It certainly was. Christian Koch in there right now also, Sue. So his a bit longer still in there. Mangan was in for about 4.7 seconds. That's about as fast as they come. I was worried that he had picked up some, some, some damage that would take him a little while to get fixed. And by the way, Koch has been in there now for about 25 yep. seconds. Yes, this is a... I'm not sure when he's coming out. 30 seconds now. It yeah, won't matter now. While, it's yeah. too long. Yep. Mangan is out to catch still the second car of all the cars who have pitted. Now, this is P5 we're looking at. This is the newcomer, Vastamaki, running there in P5. He's in a battle with... Oh, he just got around Evan Emre. So Emre, who had started in 17th up to 6th. Vastamaki started in 20th up to 7th. We still have 15 minutes of racing to go. Looking to see Holstein has made his stop. Drivers who have yet to come in are leader. Tejas, Reed, and Morris, your front three. I imagine they'll be coming in this time as we ride on board with our leader right now. Yeah, and, you know, Mangan in the middle of that, but just behind them still waiting to pit. You've got uh, Vastamaki, you've got Imre, Lindstrom, Hoyer, all still back there trying to set up for a stop. Patrick Jung, Alex, Alex Waldo still have to come in. Christian Koch finally came back out onto the track. Running in 13th position. There are several cars yet to make their stop ahead of them. We'll see how that plays out. And there goes Morris Soup. He's in. So is Evan and Murray. Coke's stop was 35 seconds in the box. Almost a minute from cone to cone. And here comes Morris out right now. Looks like Daniel's going to cycle out in about 7th position. He's back out on the track about a second. Look at this. About a second ahead of to catch. So now we have uh, Morris up into, call that second position of all the cars who've pitted. Uh-oh. Vastamaki, remember he has a great race? Nope. He yep. just nosed it in the wall and rolls it. Oh, boy, he sure did. And, man, that's tough. had gotten all the way up to fifth position. We had just documented the battle that we had. Look at that. I think he gets bit in the cutting there. Yeah. That's such a tough turn. And, and honestly, getting back on the power there is so tricky. It's so easy to get the car to spin around. And, and there's really no room to... Uh, there's no place to go there. So it's not very wide through there. So that's another driver that will have to... Call it a day, and what this means is, this is good news for every one of these drivers on the lead lap that's having trouble. That's good news for the guys who are going to get regrid back there, like the guys who are running up front. That's all good for Oscar Mangan. If he gets the win, that's just less cars for him to have to get around. If they don't finish on the lead lap, he doesn't need to pass them in the sprint race. Here, maybe Phil Reed coming in here. Manuel nope. Hoyer is. I know Hoyer. Not not Hoyer. I'm sorry. Uh, Erka Lindstrom coming in from out of seventh place. Hoyer keeps his car on track. Phil Reed is, in fact, in the pit. I believe Phil Reed's going to be a part-time driver again. I think Summer's going to get some of him. He's no longer racing on the Aperture team, a privateer this season. Of course, he was part of the Aperture championship team along with Kerry Nolte that won season five. 
Reed cycles out in fourth position. About three seconds ahead of Morris. Lee Robinson, yep, bangs it into the wall right now. Yeah. Just, boy, coming off the crest of that hill there, starts to make his descent down to the S's. You're going to see it here on camera. He and was racing just, in 15th. It's just, uh, well, okay, we're a little bit, little bit far back here. Yeah, I think we might might not have that one there, did we? That's already looks like with all the with all the stuff going on, it's hard to find all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna let me correct myself here. It looks like Kerry Nolden is with Mega Drive now, as uh, Aperture not coming back. Go. Oh. Ah, it's differently related to you. I got it. Soup. Things are heating up here. The battle for fifth is real. Daniel Moore is trying to hold off the catch. Patrick Jung in this fight also. Just a little follow-up on that. It looks like Reed and Nolden are back together. They're just not on aperture. They are teammates, though. So we'll have all of that as we look at this battle. Here. Oh, our leader is in. Our leader is in the pit suit. And there's a successful pass made by to catch. Meanwhile, Teus has come in. And it looks like he is now just pulling into his box. Oh boy, here comes here comes to catch. And now he is rolling. Our leader is Arteus is out. And he's gonna get out in front of Reed in second position. And that I think completes our pit cycle. So let's go ahead. I think we're going to press our luck here and try to do it before they come around one time. That's always difficult. Our leader right now, hopefully our timing and scoring will verify this, Oscar Mangan. Can't give you an interval time yet. It takes a little while sometimes. Second place, Alex uh, Aisio Tellez. There we go. Now we're looking at a 16 second gap. Back a little bit farther in third, Phil Reed up from 14th, up 11 spots. Christian to catch has got around Daniel Morris and is pulling away in fourth. Morris in fifth. Morris has about 10 seconds. Do we get back to Evan? Really tough Emory. Now here's a nice battle. Let's stay on this for a minute. A driver we haven't talked much about today, Sean. Manuel Hoyer in seventh. Hoyer, here he comes. Yeah. Hoyer all over the back. Of yeah, Emre. he is all over the back of Emre. Uh, boy, what a drive by Hoyer today. The DH driver has cut 26 spots. Started all the way at the back of this field, essentially, Sue. Yeah. And is uh, having just a tremendous drive here on the mountain. Hoyer on Emre like a new pair of shoes in the rain. Very tight indeed. Yeah, Hoyer trying to make here. the... Yeah, look at this. I think he's going to get there. Heading down into chase. Let's see if we can get a successful pass done here. Now there's the Cialis bathtubs, and go ahead. Hoyer's going to get that done. Working into the chase. Move Hoyer up to sixth. Emery back to seventh. Yeah, and he oof, boy, runs it out a little bit off to the grass there. Able to gather it up. Emery going to fight back, heading down into Murray's corner. Uh, Emery going to let up just a little bit and let Hoyer on his way. I'd like to run down the rest of the top 10, but let's stay on this for a bit longer here as they come through hell because then they'll be working on the mountain straight. And if, and if uh, Emery can get any type of run here, he can gather him up. Oh, I hear it. a bunch of contact somewhere. Trowbridge. Oh, yeah. He, oh. Put it, he put it in the fence and the Velcro mm. fence caught him. And he right kinda, at the beginning of the S's. Yeah. This was kind of a, gave him a little shake because once he got stuck in there, he kind of rattled around in the catch fence. Chunk, mm. chunk, chunk, chunk. Yeah, that's just, uh, boy, that did not end well for him. Okay, Emery was not able to make that pass on Hoyer as they worked their way up the mountain. Let me round out your top ten for you. 
Bruno Dominer, who my notes show that he had some trouble early on in the race running in eighth position. He's about two seconds ahead of Erka Lindstrom in ninth. And then rounding out your top ten, he's back. Christian Koch after a one-minute trip down pit lane. Yeah, Koch keeps the, the wheels on the track surface. He finishes this race on the lead lap and all is uh, not lost after uh, one, what was a very, very lengthy pit stop. Trowbridge was in 19th position on the lead lap when that happened. He's going to not finish on the lead lap now. That moves Ralph just to the last car on the lead lap. And nope, it looks like he's gone down one. 18 cars on the lead lap. It's going to be Silvio Hurt. And our director saying that it's Holstein is the last car. Let's go back and see here Holstein, if he is correct. I, my director is never wrong, and that is correct. 18 cars as Alexander Valdo and Silvio Hurt both go a lap down. Let's watch this battle. Holstein in a battle for 17th with Silvio Hurt. Silvio running in 17th right now. Just and Trowbridge are the guys with the first cars one lap down, and I think Trowbridge is out, so that's going to change. They work through Forrest's elbow. Let's see how aggressive Christophs wants to be here. Uh, yes, I think he's got a good run. Uh, Trowbridge definitely out. Uh, I racing called. They want their catch fence back. He <laughs> was in a long time. Okay, get that pass made. Silvio Hurt. Drops back to 18th. The bad news is he loses the position. The good news is, Silvio, right now, you're looking to start on the pole. Sean, I don't know how many sprint races we've done. Somebody got to run the stats for us. Silvio Hurt must have at least five pole position starts in sprint races. <laughs> Seems like he's always there. He's got, he's got a knack for finding the back of the pack, <laughs> sir. <laughs> That's quite a skill because you gotta you got to be just... Slow enough to finish on the lead lap, but not get lapped. Yeah, it, it's got to be skill because you can't be that lucky, can you? Yeah, you know, I was seeing oh, this. Uh, I know we're looking at Mangan. He's not damaged because I just got back on the car. I think we're, we're seeing the uh, the damage, uh, iRacing damage glitch uh, that can occur sometimes. Uh, I think it's connection related, maybe a bit of uh, what they call... Uh, uh, maybe a little net code even involved with that, but the car is fine. Oscar is in the lead and has pretty good command of it, uh, up about 16 and a half seconds to Aseo Tellus, who is digging, but uh, I've got to be honest, with three laps left, probably running out of time just a bit. Let's look at this battle on screen right now. This is Patrick Young. He just got around the blue car of Josh Thompson. Thompson fighting back. This is a battle for position in 11. The guy in the popcorn position back there watching the whole thing is our pole sitter, Francois Godin. Back there, Godin now is looking for an opportunity. They come across the start finish line. Godin's going to wait. The car up in front, I'm going to call it yellow. That is Jung moving to the inside. Now it's Thompson. They managed to get that straightened out. That's going to kill both of their momentum out of that corner. That's going to open up the door for Godin. He's got one. Now will he do a little crossover? I think he will. There you go. Gets in front of that one. And he's going to get both of them going <laughs> up the mountain straight. He's going to, Now he's going to try to suck along Thompson. Ooh. Thompson backs out. And that's they managed to negotiate Quarry successfully. Boy, I got... Mangan has had issue. He has pancaked the right side of his uh, car, bounced across the wall, bounces into the left side of the car. The car is severely damaged. Okay, he, he does have damage now. I can confirm that. Um, that was not good. Oh, and he's still sliding soup, and he finally just puts it in, takes it to the pit. Thanks. Unbelievable. Your new leader, Aceo Tellez. Christmas comes early. To Aceo. Yeah, Aceo getting to the, uh, you know, wrapping yeah. up that replay there. What a rough ride for Mangan there. Trying to get down the hill through the S's there in a the chest. He got offline and 
just bounced around like a pinball through there. Going back live here. There he is in the pit. The car is done. Tala is your leader. Coming across the straight, Soup. You're going to have two laps to go. Coming across the line, sorry. I talked about Christmas coming early. You know, he is from Brazil, and it is winter there, so... Maybe I don't know how what Santa how his workload is. Maybe he like splits it up and does makes his deliveries in the in the summer months down under when the reindeer are more comfortable. However that works, I don't know. But ACO now gets around Ralph just. I just have a feeling reindeer are never comfortable in Brazil. I, I don't I don't know well, why. It's winter, but, it's winter there now, but yeah, yeah, yeah but right. they're near the equator, brother. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking it just doesn't get to a hardcore winter there like uh, like you and I are maybe used to. You know what I mean? Well, another reason for ACO to come in and talk to us in the, <laughs> in the interview. Second place now goes to Phil Reed. The catch has moved up into a podium spot. Godin, remember, we were, let's go to 10th position. We were watching that battle. Godin made quick work of those guys. Jung and Thompson leads those behind in 11th and 12th. Goda now into the top 10. Drivers, big name drivers who are out. I, I just don't, don't want to go through and read them. There are so many. DeReich, Osterkamp, Mittner, Cowie, Scott Newton. Summer was running up front. Usher, Mardson, Cortell, Nolden, Tierney, just to name a, a few. Now let's see who is on, who is our last car now with ACO gone, or with, with ACO the leader now, the last car on the lead lap is still Silvio Hurt. And with only 16 seconds to go, I think we are pretty safe. And now with 16 seconds left to race, ACO just goes across the start finish line. This will be the white flag lap. His gap, five seconds to Phil Reed. So what a nice drive. What a nice drive by Tejas. He, uh, you know, just a patient ride, uh, not a scratch on the car. Took good care of it. Never got into really any tight battles with anybody. Kept the car up here at the front of the pack all day. Had a great, clean pit stop. It was a little Let, long, but he didn't, uh, it doesn't matter now. Let's go to seventh. Now. Seventh real quick. This is Bruder Dometer. Being run down by Christian Koch. Koch trying to make a boy. He has a good run coming out of hell. I think he's going to be take this. Let's see what kind of line Bruno takes. Bruno hugging the right side. If you want to pass me, put on the reggae music because you're going to have to do it high. They work through Quarry. And he's going to fend him off. Oh. Boy, Koch really uh, got in hot offline and almost clips the wall there. The car obviously on the brakes hard. Coke gonna fight back here soon. Probably not gonna try anything on the twisty sections, although I wouldn't put it beyond Coke right now. He has one more shot coming out of Forrest's elbow, heading towards the chase. Our leader, and that's where our leader is right now as he goes down the Conrad straight, still with a four second lead. We stay on this battle of Domino. Oh my goodness, there. Where are you going? Coke gets it gathered back up. He has lost a lot of time. Now he comes to the elbow. I just don't think he's too far back to get a run. We'll check in on that in a minute. Let's go ahead and see where our leader is. Just negotiating the chase. It's season number six, the debut event, the feature race from Bathurst in the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. Give it to the Brazilian, Acio Tellez. Second place going to go to former champion Phil Reed. Christian to catch with a nice run, Soup. Third. Two champions going second and third. Coming home in fourth. His partner last season, Red Devil Racing, not back with him this time, Daniel Morris. And then Manuel Hoyer, a very, very, very quiet fifth place. Let's go back to Dometer and Coke. And my goodness, they work and where oh. is oh that we've missed it. That's after did who got that win? It was yeah. Dometer was able to fend off Coke. 
Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Supin, take that seventh spot. Not another battle on the track. Silvio Hurt, if he can just bring it home, and we're going to assume that he will as there's no one chasing him. Assuming he brings it home right now as he's working his way down the force elbow, will be our pole sitter. All right, what we're going to do right now on the Global Sim Racing Channel, we're going to take a short break. But remember, this is a double header. So we're going to come back. We will run down the entire finishing order of the feature race. Hopefully, some of the drivers will come in and talk to us during the little break between the races. Then we'll get everything lined up, and we'll come back and give you the inverted grid and that 25-minute uh, sprint race that will follow back in a few. Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the opening round of Season 6 in the AOR Formula 0 2.0 Championship, the feature race. What we're going to do now is go ahead and try to highlight some of the incidents that took place in that frantic first lap. First one we're going to look at, this is a battle, a contact between Gadun and Usher. This is for the lead coming in, this is lap number one, coming in to Quarry. That's the blue car of Usher on the inside, Gadun on the outside. And there's just, you know, Gadin has to turn the car in somewhere, I think is what he's saying. And the leader gets bonked out of the way. Now, the next one we're going to look at, this is a self-spin from Holstein, Christoph Holstein, who is running sixth at the time. And the good news is here, Sean, is he spun this on lap one. 
Yeah. Nobody else got. Uh, luckily, nobody got into him. This could have been a lot uglier than it was. It could have been soup, and very, very fortunate uh, that it ended up the way it did. He gets off yeah. the line there and is able to stop the car, and uh, he decides he moves just a moment and then decides to go ahead and tow out. That that was the only yeah. uh, reasonable scenario there. The car came to rest perpendicular with the wall. Now this is a weird one. This yeah. is with tyranny down the straight. The car well, just starts to squiggle. Okay, and Tierney straightened it out in the driver chat. He took his hands off the wheel for just a brief well, split second, and, oh, and did, that's what it resulted in. I did not see that Tierney then collected somebody as well there. I didn't see, Let me go. I can. Well, yeah, that uh, trying to get by, the car getting by is uh, the one that was collected. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember who that was now that got collected in that. Um, oh, it, it looked like it was Kerry Nolden. Nolden, 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 Nolden that's right. Out. It was Nolden, yeah. Nolden, just the innocent bystander Ooh. there. Well, you know, I don't know a lot. I don't have a lot of skill when it comes to sim racing, but I, I do find I do better when I keep my hands on the wheel. I don't I mean, that's just something that I find practical. Sometimes, though, you have to do something. Things happen, and you have to try to multitask. All right. Well, there you have it. Let's run down your finishing order. 17 cars on the lead lap. With 35, that's only half the cars. Sean, you would have thought with a four-mile track, we could do better than 17 cars on the lead lap. But here we go. <laughs> Aceo Tallis and Phil Reed go 1-2. Christian to catch in third. Daniel Morris and Manuel Hoyer, fourth and fifth. Evan Emery in sixth position, followed by Bruno Dometer. Christian Koch, after some early trouble, fights back for eighth. Rounding out your top ten, Erka Lindstrom and your pole sitter. We documented his problems early on going into quarry. He fights back for 10th position. Jean-Francois Godin, Shaw. Had dropped as low as 27th in the field soup, so a great job by him, actually. Patrick Jung going to finish 11th. Josh Thompson, 12th. Christoph Holstein, 13th. Lee Robinson, 14th. Alexando Waldo, 15th. Oh, Jonas William. Uh, Wilman, I'm sorry, Ode. Uh, it's uh, 16th for him. Silvio Hurt, 17th. Rolf Just, 18th. Oscar Mangan, boy, tough end of this race for him. Yep. Huh, 19th. Uh, Alexander Trowbridge, tough, <laughs> tough end of the race for him as well. Lots of damage on that Renault. 20th. And we're looking for Hurt and Vilman to make up the sprint race front row. We get down there, 21st position. It is another driver who had some trouble. With that. Who didn't down here, huh? It is Jonas Vastamaki in 21st. Double duck spot to Lawrence Sudden Strike to Right. Jordy Lopez Jr., Renee Osterkamp, 23rd and 24th. Michael Mittner, Andy Cowie, big names all. Scott Newton, Charlie Summer was leading. He's going to finish way back. Oh, my goodness. Look at all the fast drivers in the back here, Sean. Usher's back here. Mark yeah. Usher, Knut Martinson, Jeroen De Cortel, Stefan Arsh, Kerry Nolden back here. Poor Sara Dove. I don't know, Sara, if you actually want to get out there, it's going to be frantic back there. Find somebody to latch on to. Adam Tierney in 35th. Let's go ahead and talk to a driver who had a pretty good run here today, and it's going to be Phil Reed finishing in second position. Now, Phil, let me get this straight before I turn you over to Sean for some questions. No longer racing with Aperture, but you're still with your – you have a new sponsor, so you're still with Kerry Nolden. What's the name of your team this season? That, that's correct. I am with uh, Kerry Still, uh, leaving behind Aperture, and we are now known as Mega Drive, named after the Mega Drive gaming console. And as you can see from our liveries, see just how perfect they are. <laughs> Go ahead, Sean. 14th to second for Phil. He must have something to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that was a pretty challenging race. I, maybe even a little bit more attrition than I initially thought going into this. What about you? Yeah, honestly, yeah, there was actually way more people running off the road than I was expecting. Uh, we, were here, we were here not too long ago, uh, and we didn't have that many people dropping off. So I went in with the same mindset anyway, which is don't crash. Because that every time that I do come, we come here, I always end up not getting, what, four or five laps in practice without crashing. So into the race, I sort of back off a few tenths, but then I typically finish the race here. I don't think I've crashed out of here yet. Or if I have, I don't remember. But either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, no, there were more people coming off. Uh, and uh, to finish second is hilarious because I was expecting top 10 pretty much that was all i was expecting is the best result uh so i'm very very happy with that i will say that this 
track sucks in this car. It really does. It's just, it doesn't work properly. You know, I was trying to be nice. Um, those were my impressions. Uh, I, I somewhat agree with you there, Phil. But listen, you got to go fast, baby, to get up to a second place finish. You did it today. Got to go fast. I like that. That's playing into the livery. I, I see what you're doing, Sean. You're a <laughs> smart man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, uh, you got to do it a little bit differently. And you know what? You're going to have some pretty fast guys behind you. Uh, yes. You know, with all the attrition we had there, uh, what's the strategy for the sprint race? Honestly, it's going to be the same. I'm going to try to not be too cautious because I know that there are fast guys behind, so I can't be as slow in the opening laps because I don't want people to be hitting into me thinking I'm a bit slow. But then again, got a few slow guys up there ahead, or slower guys, I should say, uh, ahead, and they may be even slower. So I don't know. It'll, it'll be an interesting way to play out, but I think just playing it safe is the uh, is the best thing here because it, it could go wrong at any places we saw with so many incidents. It's just... It's it's tough, but uh, yeah, going in and if I can get into the top ten, that's same same. Uh, out, hopefully for the same outcome, that's all I'm looking for because I don't think I'm going to be able to pass too many people because I am not too much faster than the guys around me, even though the guys ahead. Just because I am backing off, I can go fast and I can crash, I can go slow and I can finish the race. So yeah. Okay, all well, right, good, buddy. Good luck to you. The session's up. Going in there. We're uh, that was Phil Reed, your second place finisher. What we're going to do right now on the Globals and Racing Channel is take a short break. We'll get all of our ducks in a row. We'll come back and bring you that 25 minute sprint race before it goes green. Back in a few.
Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Apex Online Racing Formula Renault 2.0 Championship, round number one from Bathurst. You know, the best part of any doubleheader event is the break between races. It's the perfect blend of post-race high and pre-race jitters. So let's go ahead and take this opportunity and let Sean go ahead and talk about the race details here for this 25-minute feature. Yes, Soup. Let's do that. Uh, details here in the second race. This is a 25-minute sprint, Soup. And uh, uh, it is going to be no pit stop involved. That You've got plenty of fuel on board to get this done, and it's only 40%, but the 25 lap uh, eliminates that. In fact, if you've got to go into the pits, uh, well, you're, you're going to be out of this race. Let's face it, okay? Uh, we are inverting the grid here. The results of the last race, everyone on the lead lap will be inverted. So, uh, well, what does that mean? Well, that means uh, I think we said Silvio Hurt was. Uh, Silvio Hurt. It, Silvio Hurt is going to be your pole sitter in this race, and uh, all the cars that were laps down are going to start behind everybody that was on the lead lap. But Soup, uh, we've got a great race in store for you here. You know, um, 25 minutes is not a lot of time on the mountain. Uh, guys are going to be scrambling to pick up positions. Dare I say we may see more carnage than we did the first time. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, lots at stake here. I mean, we're, you know, it's only round one, but boy, you'd sure hate to leave round one coming up empty. You saw, you saw there on the graphic, Sean, speaking of the reduced points for the sprint race. Let's go ahead and show you here, since this is the first race of the season, how the point system actually works. You can see the, the numbers in yellow. Those are the points you get for the feature race, and they're a little bit larger. About two-thirds worth of points for the sprint race. 32 for a win in the feature compared to 20. And, of course, the feature race pays down to 20th position, while the sprint race only pays down to 16th. Notice at the bottom, you didn't think these were important, but they actually determined the champion. And those are the bonus points pole position in the feature then in the uh, sprint race and in the sprint and the feature race you get a point for fastest lap during the race and you also get a point if you complete the feature or the sprint two bonus points available a zero incident point sean you know you would think when you work in a bathurst <laughs> richard losper i was one of our commentators here at gsrc said you know incident points really aren't that important at bathurst because if you're picking up an incident point chances are you've been in the wall yeah, yeah. The the walls, as we've seen, um, soup in the uh, first race in the feature event, really easy to find, and the, the easiest yeah. spot to find them is really up on the top of the mountain there in the S's. And uh, well, certainly we saw a fair trouble, a uh, fair amount of trouble there. There was also trouble in the cutting, uh, turn four, another very very tricky spot on this track that gets very narrow. And if the car spins around, usually there's traffic behind you trying to get through. It does create quite a log jam. The unfortunate thing there is, is because it's so narrow, it usually results in damage when you get spun around there. So when you're looking for a, uh, somebody that has a favorite here in this race, it would possibly be one of the big name drivers that had trouble able to finish on the lead lap. I would think our pole sitter, Jean-Francois Godin, I think he came in about ninth or 10th position, if memory serves me right. That's going to regrid him about in that same position. Look for him to be good. He's not going to have to deal with as many cars in front of him, and the big guys will be behind. As you can hear the church bells here ringing at Bathurst. Isn't that pretty? That's very, that's very nice, yes. All right. I mean, well, soup. those bells were right on time because it's time to go racing. Maybe the practice session is wrapping up. And, and we'll I just, think we yeah. can get to our grid here in just a moment. And we have to wait for practice. We can't come to it early. We actually have to wait for practice to be done before iRacing generates the information that we want. There we go. On the front row, as expected, it's Sylvia Hurt and Odd Jonas Villeman. Row two, Sean. Going to be Alexander Waldo and Christopher Holstein. I'm sorry, Christoph Holstein. Josh Thompson and Patrick Young in the next row. Row four, Jean-Francois Godin and Erka Lindstrom. Ninth and tenth, Christian Koch and Bruno Dominer. All right. Eleventh and twelfth, going to be Evan Rimray and Manuel Hoyer. Baker's does the spot, Daniel Morris and Christian to catch. Row eight, Phil Reed. AC Hotel is our winner. 
Then we get to the guys who didn't finish on the lead lap. Ralph Just and Oscar Mangan. He could be good. Row 10, going to be Jonas Bastamaki and Lawrence DeRike. 21 and 22, Rene Ostercamp and Michael Mittner. All right, Soup and Andy Cowie, Scott Newton, going to be there on row 12. Char Charlie Summer and Mark Usher, two big names, 25th and 26th. And more big names back there, Canute Martinson, Jeroen de Cortel. Stephen Ash, Kerry Nolden back there as well. They're just about ready to get going. Sarah Dove, Adam Tierney, and Silvio Hurt. Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows because the horses are out of the barn. Going through Hell Corner, it is your leader. And I believe it's going to be Odd Jonas Villeman. Fastamaki Fast with a huge uh, off coming out of Hell. I do not see, even though he has said, I don't see Silvio Hurt that he came back. Villeman is out in front. Hurt is nowhere to be found. Holstein in second. He'll be good. Waldo in third. Godin up to fifth already. Yeah, Hurt's in the pit. Back out now. Maybe decided that he did not want to start from the pole. Sacrifice that one. Will come out and race from the back. Probably best. Uh, somebody a little braver is Alexander Valdo. He says, no problem. I'll lead him up and down the mountain the first time around. And he's doing it right now. Oh, let me correct myself. I'm sorry. Odd uh, Jonas Willman is our is our leader right now. Baldo back in fourth position. Oh, and we have one oh. off one of the front runners off. It's Thompson. He takes it. Oh, and also Willman is off. We'll come back and get those. And they. Oh man, I hear them banging that back in there. Mangin too. Uh, their soup. Quartel involved. Wow. Martinson. Martinson made his way through. Not as bad as it could be. They continue to bang in the back, though. We will again review those at the end of the race. Too much to cover right now. So who's out in front? Well, it's Christoph Holstein. There's a big name for you. One of the drivers we thought would be very competitive. He's got about a 1.6 second lead over the pole center. Francois go down. Now behind him, look at this battle. This is Valdo in third, in fourth position. He got past Christian Koch up to third. It really is redemption time, Sean. Holstein, Godin, and Koch, all big names drivers, a second chance to show what they can do here. Well, uh, we've already got a bunch of them that aren't going to get that chance. Soup, we've already had that. Uh, I'm looking at, what, seven cars already in the pit. The good news is our race winner, Asio Telia, still out there. Phil Reed's still out there. That was good from him to catch us safely in racing in ninth position. How about some of the big names that had trouble in round one? Did they survive? Yep, Mittner is okay. Osterkamp racing. Mark Usher back in 17th. Charlie Summer still out there. But all that well, 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 many seconds behind our race leader right now, Christoph Holstein. Now, Christoph qualified in sixth position in the feature race. Remember, our pole sitter was Jean-Francois Godin, so he certainly has the legs to run down Holstein. And let's go ahead and give you that interval, 1.4, as they work their way up the mound for the second time. We're looking there at Godin. It's now not that far behind. Here comes Coke. On board right, with on Coke board, here. Yeah. Getting this out of great. Forest Elbow. Let's stay on this for a while because this is really good. Now, they head down the straight. Let's see what type of line they take. More banging. I can report that Tyranny has had another. Man, it looks like he took his hands off the wheel again. Adam has put it in the wall. Nobody Jeez. got into him. What is going on with Adam Tyranny today? <laughs> Back up to second place. And it was Coke who was able to get around Godah. Usher pulling out on Mentner, trying to take that spot. Usher continuing to come up through the field, up 11 spots. He's in the 15th, heading through the chase. Remember, Usher very fast, second fastest qualifier. Hoyer, oh, Hoyer has... just in front of him as he gets by. Oh, Oof. no. And Dometer, looks like Dometer got into the back of Valdo, who had more trouble. Oh, it's again the... Valdo with trouble, yeah. There, there we see it. it 
We got to get these quick and then we got to move back to them. We try to get as many as we can. Charlie Summers had trouble as well, Soup, and he Last runs off bad. into the pits. So let's go back up front again and, and tell you what's going on up there. Holstein still out in front. They've been able to knock off a couple tenths. Now that lead, which was what, one and a half, is down to 1.2. The difference is this time he has Coke chase him instead of Goda. Coke and Goda running two and three. If we drop back, can you see him in the screen? He's not even in there. It's a driver in fourth. A new driver I'm not really familiar with. Patrick, Patrick Young Jung. having a great run in fourth mm -hmm. position. Very He's consistent solid right there, now. yeah. And then Erka Lindstrom in fifth. Just got to keep it in the gray off the curves and under power. He's really, really got a good good run here now. But he has let uh, the top three get about three and a half seconds in front of him. He's being chased very, very closely by Erka Lindstrom and we'll Christian to catch back yeah, there. We'll, we'll document that one, about one second back to the catch. I expect that's a catch to get there pretty quick. So we'll watch as the Red Devil driver works his way around those drivers racing in fourth and fifth to catch in six right now. Holstein's lead down to one second now. There we see as we look still with Lindstrom. Look at that thing coming. And, and Newton, yeah, Newton Scott has... Newton. I think he might have been scared. Mm. Uh, Isio Tellis may have locked it up a little bit. No, he was chasing Tellis. I don't know why Newton, but the cookie has crumbled. That happened right in front of Evan Emery. Did a good job of getting around. Yeah, and it happened. Uh, it, it happened right there um, uh, in the final turn, just before Conrad straight there. They, the Falcon, I like to call the Falcon turn, <laughs> didn't work out for Scott. He has to wait, let a lot of traffic by before he was able to get going there again. So, Emory lost momentum and he got passed by Usher. And Charlie Summer, you talked about him having trouble. He just put it in the wall really hard. His day is absolutely done now. Now here's to catch. We talked about that. Sure enough, our director has found it. He's up on the back of Lindstrom. They were going up the Conrad of uh, the uh, Mountain Straight. Ducks to the inside. This should be easy work for the Red Devil Racer. Ooh, tell us, tell us with a move on on Reed. Gonna try and do it, but did not. He held off going into quarry. We didn't have that one on screen, but we did see the t the to catch pass being made. Yeah, sorry about that suit. All right. Nothing going on up front. The interval is about one second. Coke is running her down. Coke has pulled away a little bit from Goda. To catch now, next on his hit list is Patrick Jung. We'll mark that interval, 2.3 seconds. Let's go back, I think. Let's go back to the Reed, the one you were looking at there. Let's look at yeah. Spencer Man Reed. This one's heating up. It is, and uh, Reed hot on his tail, but, uh, you know, right back there is it, our race winner from the feature race, uh, Tellez. He's really, really fast, gets a move there on Reed. Reed makes a mistake. Boy, they Reed is really scrambling. Yeah, I uh -oh. think Reed finally... Uh oh yeah. Big trouble for Reed there. He really has to get out of it. The car just didn't look right either. He lost his rhythm. Now he's back. Let's go to P2. Coke is being challenged. Look at this. Godin got a run on him, and he's going to make that pass going into the chase. That's good news back there for, for Holstrom. As now that gap is stretched out a little bit to 1.2 seconds. The more the Godin and Coke battle, probably the better for Holstein. Man, I, Soup, this is the best battle on track back here for 8th. Phil Reed still got holding off these guys. Bruno Dominer just behind him and fighting with uh, Dominer fighting with uh, I'm sorry, Mark Usher there lost my place but Usher giving fight as they come down the front straight, headed to hell Riding on board with Usher now. remember Usher was the second fastest qualifier in the feature race, he certainly has the speed as he comes off on the back of Dominer should be able to make quick work of Bruno let's go to P1 and look at this, Holstein now has been run down all of a sudden he has been chased. Now, this is Holstein on the inside in the blue car, making the move on the outside. That's Godard. Remember, he was back in third. He gets that done. Now, he's trying to bring along with him Coke. And a going ahead, Coke is going to get that. Holstein drops back to third. So, we have a new leader. It is John Francois Godard. He's been there before. He started on the pole in the feature. He's back out in front. He led for an entire mountain straight before getting bumped off by Usher. 
Yeah, and, and those two, Coke and Godin, they've been the uh, the story of the race. Soup, they both come up through this yep. field together. Now find himself both on the podium. Christoph Holstein fighting the good fight, still in a podium position and still ahead. Uh, Patrick Jung by uh, about three three seconds. Let's go to six real quick because I think this is going to be quick work here for our race winner, AC Otelis. They work through Forrest Elbow. He's trying to run down Erka Lindstrom. He's about four car lanes back, but he should have some momentum now as they head down to the chase. It's about three car lanes. Here he comes. It's about two car lanes. It's one car lane. It's half a car lane. They are now side by side. And I believe Erka's not going to put up that big of a fight and give that position to AC Otelis. Moves up to six. Oh, Little Bird problem has had a up. problem. Yeah, up in the S's soup. It can't, could not get the car turned around. Very, very tough. Sat in the middle of the track for a long time with traffic coming. Yeah, she just couldn't find her wings here today. And Little Bird having trouble. And now we're looking at Emre in 16th position. Mm. He goes side by side in the chase with his opponent. And it does not work out. Uh, contact between him and Dometer gets Emre off track. Dometer travels on. He slots back into 16th position just behind Scott Newton. Okay, let's go back up to the front. We'll take a look, see what's going on up there. Dom or, uh, Godin, since he's got the lead back, he's opened it up for one second over Coke. Trying to hang on as Holstein. They're about one second apart. Let's go to fourth, though. It did not take mm. him long as ACO. Oh, no, it's to catch. It should have been. I thought it was Talius. No, Talius is behind him. Okay, here comes to catch. Yeah, to catch. To catch, trying to take down Patrick Jung. Jung, who's had just nothing but a great drive today and in, in, in this race. And to catch is all over him. Bad time to have to try and pass somebody when you're on the top of the mountain. Jung going to lead him through. Set up for Forrest Elbow here. To catch Locking those tires up. To catch happy to wait, except for the fact that Teasio is coming right now. So here we go. Look at the drive up. We've seen this before. Let's see if Jung protects the right side of the track. Most everyone's been staying over the left. Jung trying to take his half out of the middle. Here comes Christian. To catch going to go to the right hand side. That's been the preferred passing line for everybody. He's going to get that done. Move Christian up to fourth position. Back to fifth is Jung. Next on the hit list for Jung will be coming Teus. Now his back about one and a half seconds. Boy, the draft on that Conrad straight there, Soup, Woo. is almost like a, a boost, like a turbo. It, it is indeed. Now we're going to go back a little bit farther. This is Usher, side by side. On the inside is Phil Reed. They're gonna be heading down into the first corner. This is Hell. Reed on the inside, he'll have the preferred position. Usher in the blue car will have the momentum. Usher box out, but maybe get a better drive as he maybe gets to the apex a little bit better. He's about two car lengths back. This is a long straight as well. Not quite as long as the Conrad straight as they start to go up the hill. Here he comes, he's gotta run. Reed kind of weaves back and forth. He's gonna force Usher to try to do it on the outside through Quarry. If Reed can hang in here, he might be able to defend this. Reed backs out, he gives the position to Usher, move him up into eighth position. Our second place finisher in the feature race, Phil Reed, dropping back to ninth. Reed said all he wanted was a top 10. So far, mission accomplished. He's hanging on, but Usher continue to move up the ladder. 18 spots he's taken down now, Soup, and Wow, Erka Lindstrom sits just in front of him, under a second. Sean, I know we're early, but there seems to be a lot more big names still in the race than there were in the feature race. Maybe they got slapped around a little bit and they thought better of what they're going to do coming in here. Drivers are still out there. Mittner's still racing, and, and uh, a lot of the guys are still out there that did not have a very good feature race. Lawrence yeah. Strike to Right still out there. And, and you know what? This race actually got off to a lot better start, and there's been a lot yeah. less attrition. Uh, over those first couple of laps and it was I, I mean there's still several I, I said there were like seven cars right. that didn't make it through that but on the whole uh, much much better start than we got off to last time and now quite honestly Super, uh, we're almost at the 10 minute mark I, about six a little over six laps left right now let's go ahead back to fifth position we've been documenting Patrick Jung having a good run coming up now as they work through Murray 
this is Teyas. I imagine Teyas. Oh, I apologize. This is through the chase. They're coming up to Murray right now. No need to do this here yet, Alicia. You can wait a little bit. My mom taught me not to stereotype, but Brazilians oh, are not big on waiting. And yep, <laughs> he's not. Yeah, and he's, he's gonna, gonna he's gonna take it across the line, down in the hell corner. And he hangs on, keeps it off that curb. Yep, that curb will throw you off. So tell you, our race, good. our race winner up to fifth, Patrick Jung, a name to watch this season. Hopefully, he will race a lot. Very impressive run in sixth spot. He's got a. Now look back here. Here's a bet. This is Usher again, this time with Lindstrom. And Usher gets that. He moves up into seventh. Oh, oh Talias has had a problem. In, just in front of them, yeah. And looks like was, it was a self-spin, Soup. Let's look at it on the replay. Boy, a good view of that one, too, would be from too the top. Too much curve. You're going to see it here. He's going to get up on that curb, and it upsets the car. Sends him around. He's able to keep it off the walls, but he loses a lot of time. Hard to get two replays here because the action is so fast, but let's go ahead and look at this. We want to get a good view of it. Look at this one on board Patrick's car. And luckily, the car didn't bounce back out in front of him when he goes to the outside. Man, that just shows you how narrow it is there. So, Jung up to fifth spot again. Move our race winner. He's going to finish well down. Now, look at this. Aisio stayed out there, though. Yeah, he didn't bend the car up, Sue. Only back to it 11th. Just, it just took him a long time to get it turned around and turned around carefully without getting into any of the traffic coming by. You remember those points that he saves that he's going to be able to get here. Of just a handful of points if he can finish at 11th or 10th in this sprint race. Again, that's what can win you a championship. Usher has worked his way up to 6th. Let's go ahead and use my timing and scoring. Who's our big mover so far? How about Renee Osterkamp? Racing in ninth position right now. Yeah, no, Osterkamp's had a great race and uh, fighting with Michael Mintner, Mintner. Both those drivers up 12 spot suit. It's a good battle there in the top 10. But our biggest mover and shaker has definitely been by far and away Mark Usher up 20 spots and still gaining. Got it down to under two seconds now on Patrick Jones. Yeah, look at that, 26 to 6, you're right, Sean. That's really, that's a nice job. I don't care who you race for. That's a good day at the office, sir. Another big mover since we're talking about it. How about we talk about the Orange Viking, Canute Martinson, in 15th spot right now. He's up 12 spots. Started 27th. He's in a battle with Bruno Dometer. They work their way just starting now as they go through Griffin's Mountain. Through seven, eight, and nine. Canute had a rough feature event. Boy, Jung. Jung is oh. just hanging on to Tell the top five. Had, is this Did Tellius have another oh, he problem? Did. Yeah, he did. No. More trouble for Tellius. Or was that the same one? I'm. If you're looking I at the same thing, I, 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 I think he just spun in quarry. Okay. I mean, he's dropped now all the way back to 11th. Well, I think that's I think that's the same one we saw. That one happened just in front of, of Jung again. I think that's yeah. the one we just saw. Maybe our replays yeah. are playing yeah. funny things on us. <laughs> Sometimes they, they trick us here a little bit. Sorry, folks, if that's the case. The lead up to 1.6 seconds. Francois... Uh, well, duh. Why is he going so fast? Well, because he's fast. He's the pole sitter in the feature <laughs> race. He says good here. Coke, not able to do anything with him. Holstein started on the pole in third. But remember, Holstein was the sixth fastest qualifier as well. So a lot of these guys are just getting a little bit of uh, justice paid back to him. Well, I'm really impressed. This Patrick Jung uh, guy is really uh done amazing things today he's got to try and hold off mark usher i don't know if he can do that usher the world leader in practice laps uh, here in the aor 
I think he's going to be hard one to keep. But all, let's face it, all Usher's done since the drop of the green flag is pick up spot soup. And I think he's about to pick another one up and get himself into the top five. Going to be really tough to get on the podium, but he is digging. Let's go ahead and stay on this. We'll see if he's patient enough or if he's going to try to do I think he's going to try to do it on the twisty sections. Man, once again, he is on him like a postage stamp. Usher trying to find his way around. Young just trying to hit his line, just racing normally. Well, he's not going to get him here. This is not a good spot to try and pass him. Let let Usher Say drive. That. I mean, let Jung drive through here. You know you can get him on the Conrod. They come down. Here we go. Now looking for a good drive off of here. I would usually say, I would usually agree with that, but I think Usher is trying to think every second right now. He's thinking podium. Here we go. This is going to be, this is no hope for Jung here as he moves to the outside on the right hand side get that done early as they head down into the chase and again so much of this depends on the setup of the car what your downforce level how much you've put downforce into the car so you can get up and down the mountains easier usher moves up into fifth does he have a chance to get to the catch now i don't think so five seconds and back soup real quickly i can't confirm as we come back across the front straight here uh tell us it's in the pits uh, this or, time uh, he, he did this time he did have a spin. Yeah. A self-spin. Now, I don't know if it's the same one you saw. This one, I think, just happened. And, yeah, he's he's banged it in. We can't get there. So he is done. He was racing at 21st. He's, he's done. Okay, let's see if we can find a battle to watch here somewhere. Let's go to Reed in this battle with, with Lindstrom. Now, coming into uh, this victory oh, come Ostrakamp yeah. as well. Ostercamp take trying to take him down to the outside, going into quarry. Yeah, he's got to let off that that car started to push up towards the wall for Ostercamp. Now he's got to defend here against uh, Urka Lindstrom. Here comes Lindstrom. Lindstrom got a good run at him. Good look at him here in the cutting. Watching the whole thing is Mittner who would like to get up there as well. Looks like Oster. I would expect Ostercamp to pull away. I think in Lindstrom's big problem was not going to be what's in front of him. It was going to be what's behind him in the form of Michael Mittner. Osterkamp begins to distance himself through the technical sections, trying to hang on to the pack of Reed running in seventh. This is interesting, Song. These four drivers are all about three or four car lengths apart. Let's see what kind of run they get out of Forest Elbow. Yeah, not much separating him at all, Soup, and they're going to get a big run here on the Conrad Strait. I think Reed's far enough. He is safe. Osterkamp about eight car lengths ahead. He is safe. Lindstrom, I think he's going to be safe, too, and I don't think Mitner's going to get them, so they're going to keep this going through the chase, through Murray, through Hell, and they'll try it one more time as they go up the mountain straight. This is probably the best battle on the track right now. At least for a serious position up front. Well, I don't know if uh, I don't know if Christian Coke is quite giving up. Uh, we got about two laps to go. Super, what, just under two minutes remaining now. I don't know if Coke is uh, giving up on this chase on Godin. Uh, you know, all it's going to take is bit. one one little slip up. Yeah, it's down to almost, it was a minute, it was a minute and a half. It was a second and a half. It's down to about 1.1 right now. Coke going to make this very interesting. Going to try to anyway. There is another battle when we get a chance. It's kind of fun. Let's go to 17th real quick. This is 18th position here. This is Sarah Dove in a battle with, with Ralph Jeffs. They are side by side. This is fun. There is another car in the mix. Watching the whole thing is Silvio Hurt out in front. It looks like I think Jeffs is going to get this spot. Dove back in 18th. We'll keep an eye on that one. They go down into the chase. So that's a fun one to watch. Oh, here comes Sarah. She's going to back up. Look at the run now from Silvio. Silvio, the road doesn't go over there. <laughs> He gets it back online. He gets it back on the track. Oh, that is fun. Oh, and Sar gets the uh, the run out of the turn. Let's stay on this one till they decide how they get this done. They work through, going through hell, and I believe now, for right now, Dove's going to get, she gets a really good drive. 
that position should be safe. Just is now in that battle with Silvio Hurt, who decided to start from pit lane. These are the last cars on the lead lap, except for Lawrence Sudden Strike to Right. So Jean-Francois Godin making his way through Murray's corner now. I believe he's going to get the white flag right here with one lap to go. Coke chasing as hard as he can, but I don't think he can happen unless there's a mistake. Holstein way out of reach, six and a half seconds back. Yeah, one second, though, is all that separates those guys. I think there is a chance if, if Coke can be really fast. If I didn't think that Godin really had a handle on this track, I would give Coke more of a chance here, but I really think Jean-Francois feels pretty darn comfortable, or as comfortable as you can be on this place. That um, battle that we were watching between uh, between those guys, Osterkamp and Reed, that, let's go ahead to, let's look at Osterkamp right now. Here comes Ooh, Here comes Reed. Reed. Yeah, Soup, here comes Reed on the outside. Again, Mountain the yellow straight. The yellow car of Osterkamp protecting the inside. Reed is going to have to force him wide. He wasn't able to close the door. That's going to let Osterkamp get a run back up there. And he's going to fend it off for right now. Probably that's not so bad for Reed. If Reed can just stay close enough, he can get that pass made on the long back straight. Behind him is Litz, uh, Oh, look at this. Mittner ducking in here. Let's go back one position back to eight. Mittner still trying to find a play around Lindstrom. We'll come back and watch that one. Can't imagine what's going to happen as they go over the mountain, but certainly out of Forest Elbow, something could go on. Yeah, anything can, uh -oh. anything can happen there. Up front, knock off two more tenths of a second. It's now eight tenths of a second. The problem is they are running out of time as they're working down. The Conrad straight, I don't think he's going to get there. Our leader is going to be coming into the chase right now. Just a few more corners to go for Jean-Francois Godin. He has several wins in his AOR career. He's going to pick up another one here. The season six debut. The feature race went to Aisio Teles. The sprint race goes to Jean-Francois Godin. Christian Koch gets second. Christoph Holstein gets third. Something happened to Usher. Why everybody getting by him? Trying to pick it up. Oh, I think he had trouble. He had trouble in Forest Elbow. He had trouble all the way back up the trap for uh, track and Forest Elbow, and I think he got it on the wall, damaged the car, and started crabbing on him. I think coming down that Conrad straight. He's coming down through the S tier in the dipper. And here we come down to Force Elbow. Yeah. And he oh, loses he, that he, he loses just, that positions and then he, yeah. he gives it up to, to Osterkamp, gets him right before the the final corner. Lindstrom was able to fend off Mittner. And then in fact Mittner actually lost a spot to Scott Newton is going to sneak Mittner and snake 10th position from him. Woo. Yeah, and Osterkamp was able to keep Phil Reed away from Phil. Uh, one final uh, mistake there, getting through the chase, and uh, that uh, that slowed him down and gives let's, that position let's uh, go to, sixth. Let's go to Sara Dove real quick, and we'll watch her finish up. Looks like she's going to come home in 17th. She got the best of, of uh, Silvio Hurt who comes home on 18th, and Ralph Just, the last car on the lead lap. Okay, what we'll do right now on the Global Sim Racing Channel is take a short break. We'll come back to run down your entire finishing over, maybe show you a few replays of that race, talk to some of the drivers, and close-up shot. Back in a few.
Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Apex Online Racing Formula No 2.0 Championship. Round number one from Bathurst. We just completed the second half of the double feature, the 25-minute sprint race. And we're going to start before we run down the finishing order. Sean, let's take a look at this uh, incident that happened to Jonas Vastamaki here. Yeah, Soup, let's look at that real quick here. Just a real melee uh, unfolds here on that opening lap. Vastamaki is going to get turned around. And everybody behind him scrambles. Well, uh, yeah, let's let's catch the the right replay here. Sorry, there, folks. No. Okay. Oh, well, there we have it up in front. It wasn't. Ah, uh, that's right. It was. It was Thompson. <laughs> All right, there it is. You see at the top of the hill there. Thompson has trouble, and car gets off. Makes big boom, upside down, everybody behind him scrambling. On board with Josh Thompson right here. Just gets offline and into that wall. And yeah, that's Wil Wilman up front there. And, look at and all then there's the, yeah, there, everybody yeah. checking up behind. Honestly, that that again could have been worse than than it uh, mm -hmm. than it actually was. Even though it looked bad, we've seen them, um, Sean. We've seen them sometimes where the track is totally blocked and you just have to wait for people to clear out. Let's go ahead and run down your finishing order here. Your winner, the pole sitter in the feature race, he gets a little bit of uh, justice here as he gets the win in the sprint race. John Francois Godel, Christian Koch gets second. Christoph Holstein rounds out your podium. Fourth and fifth go to Christian to catch. And Patrick Jung, a guy, a driver to keep an eye on. Sean and I are very impressed with what we saw in that sprint race. The next five, the back half of your top ten, Renee Osterkamp, Phil Reed, Erka Lindstrom. Scott Newton had a nice run, 24th to 9th. And another one, Michael Mittner, able to follow up on a bad feature race, 22nd to 10th to round out your top ten. Sean? And 11th today, going to go to Daniel Morris. Mark Usher, boy, he was awful fast, but uh, the best it's going to be is 12th after late trouble. Uh, Knut Martinson, 13th, up 14 spots to get there. Good run by him. 14th, going to be Evan Emre. Bruno Domiter, 15th. Jonas Fastamaki and 16th. Sardov, 17th, up 14 spots to get there despite a little bit of trouble. Decent run for Sardov. Silvio Hurt in 18th, 19th, Rolf Just, and 20th, going to go to Lawrence DeReich. Hidden Blackjack, Alicia Tejas, in the double duck spot, Alexander Valdo. 23rd went to Charlie Summer. One score and four was Manuel Hoyer, Adam Tierney in the quarter century mark. 26th, 27th, and 28th, Odd Jonas Villeman, Stefan Osh, and jo oh boy, we sure did not hear much from Jordan Dave Cortell, a driver we not today like to watch him race. Yeah, we saw Joss Thompson have his trouble there on the replay. He's going to finish 29th. Oscar Mangan, he looks so good in the feature race, not so much in the sprint. He comes home 30th, 31st, and 32nd. The milkman Andy Cowie and Kerry Nolden rounds out the grid. Okay, there you have it. Let's go ahead and see who we have in the interview room. Sean, uh, who would you like to talk to? I can escort them in here. Let's let's talk. Let's start with Phil Reed here. Let's get him in here. Talk to Phil Reed real quick uh, about the run he had. Uh, not a bad one today. Finishes uh, here seventh in the feature. Phil, congratulations. Hard fought uh, battle out there. Second time around. Yeah, yeah. That was a lot more. I think that was a lot more fun. Again, still not a fan of this track. Um, at least in these cars. Um, but uh, yeah, has uh, sort of survived on the early stages. Uh, tried to keep up with the the uh, fast guys ahead because uh, because I, I was surprised actually because i sort of didn't really look at the results too much but i was surprised at who was ahead like with christian and uh, jean ahead you know some of the quick guys out there so i was sort of thinking oh, okay so probably the best case scenario is finish sixth and then uh, at the end i was i was on target for that and uh, had to fight with rene to try and keep on to that vision it was good fun actually fighting rene uh it's been a while since that's happened and yeah so i finished seventh so i was much better because i said to you guys said i wanted the top 10 and the seventh yes, is you in did. the top 10 yeah, and you drove it a little hard into the chase there on that last lap, trying to get him, and it, it didn't work out for you. It was tough. You really kept it close. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking I could get the move done. I've done it there a couple of times before, and it's not the worst. Granted, I'd probably then be on the outside for the final corner, and so probably would have had to give the position up anyway. But I just got scared off the road by Mark ahead. Uh, I didn't really see him until late, and then I saw he was going really slow, and I didn't want to 
still be on that line because that would have gone straight into the back of Mark. So, and I didn't want to risk braking too hard and spinning around into Rene, so I just sort of dumped, so I just drifted off the track a little bit just to save it, which is annoying because I lost my zero time bonus on that corner. So, <laughs> that ah. the first one I've had in years, but oh well. <laughs> well, listen, that was good hard racing here on the mountain. I will get off the mountain and uh, move on to some proper racing next week, right? Well, that's the plan. Yeah, it's uh, oh man, uh, well, it's a Suzuka, I believe, next race. Yes. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that one. I love Suzuka. Um, uh, I'm not the greatest at Suzuka, but I'm not the greatest in this car, so it all sort of ni- nicely matches up, really. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that a lot, especially. I think uh, we'll probably get away from the uh, bucket load of retirements that we had in both the races here because it's just a well, it's just an easy track, and it will hopefully be the proper debut that we have for lots of the. Uh, the new guys in here because I don't think this is a particularly good uh, good circuit for them to come in his first time and get caught up in incidents here and there. So I think uh, for them it's much better uh, f- as well. It should be uh, some better racing, which is what I'm hoping for. All right, Phil. Cheers, my friend. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Phil Reed, your second place finisher in the feature race. He comes home with a seventh place here in the sprint. It just not it just would not be right if we did not talk to Australia's own Scott Newton as we are at Bathurst. Scott didn't have so much luck in the feature race, had a top ten finish here coming home ninth in the sprint. Scott, a little better twenty fourth to ninth. Nice job. No, cheers, Bill. Um yeah, in the feature race, uh with the qualifying I bottled it quite badly and uh put me back in the in the tenth place for um the grid. Um in the earlier laps, I managed to get up to P5, and I uh, was trying to make the move on Christian and um, trying to go around the outside, but there was contact in front and pretty much had nowhere to go, so that was pretty much the uh, the way that the feature went. Uh, for the sprint race, as you said, started 24th, uh, right on the, the exit of the last corner, and um, yeah, just through attrition, uh, managed to get up into, I think, 10th place, but uh, looped it around at uh, Forest Elbow, so I had to... Uh, make my way back up, and uh, yeah, it was great to um, see that a couple more guys had a few issues towards the end and managed the top 10. Um, I know that a lot of Australians really take pride in racing at Bathurst and Phillip Island and a few of the other Australian tracks. Do you, do you, do you uh, are you one of those? Do you feel really good down here? Uh, with Bathurst and the Formula Renault, maybe not so much just with all the landmines and all that sort of thing that you have to navigate. Um, it's quite tricky in this car but yeah definitely uh phillip island is a uh, much more favored track for me uh that's technically my home track currently uh living in western australia um if i was over the other side of the country yeah bathurst would be the closest but um yeah definitely looking forward to uh phillip island later in the in the season but also to next week as well well the aor follows the the schedule of the i racing formula Renault series and I think you Aussies got blamed for getting Bathurst on the schedule. All your voting got this one in here. Uh, well, to be honest, I haven't ran uh, Oran Park in the Formula Renault. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's... I, I th- I'm, I'm going to jump in and say I think that'd be a blast. I love Oran Park, Scott. That's a shame that track's not there anymore. But, yeah, but to be fair, I think that this track would have provided more overtaking opportunities rather than uh, just heading into Term 1. At Oran Park, I think that's really the only opportunity opportunity to uh, make an overtake. But um, yeah, it should be a good one for for the rest of the season. Hopefully, hopefully they can um, make some uh, solid finishes. Okay, I'm going to get you out of here on this one. I think I may have asked you this question before, but it came up in the broadcast again. And you're down there in the Southern Hemisphere, so we need to know: Is is Santa Claus? Does he visit Australia? And if he does. It comes in your summertime, so does he dress up, or does he wear like Bermuda shorts, or what does what happen? What is Christmas like down there? Who's the guy? Uh, yeah, Santa is the guy. That is the guy. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but does he come all bundled up in like winter clothing? Uh, during the summer, it's probably about twenty degrees ambient, twenty twenty to twenty five ambient. So yeah. It might get a little bit toasty, but yes, yeah, something mag- magical about the guy. So that just doesn't seem never right, affects though. you. Okay, <laughs> well there you go. <laughs> Learn something new all the time. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll let Scott get out of. Good luck at the origami pretzel coming up next week, buddy. No, it's just fellas. 
Scott Newton. Okay. We like to also bring you the race, but we like to also inform you on world culture as well. Sean, who you got? <laughs> Speaking of world culture, we'll talk to the very cultured Evan Imre wow. and uh, <laughs> talk to him about uh, both races. Evan, a bit of a slog out there for you today, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, first race, I just, it was a matter of surviving because everybody was crashing it out so i ended up finishing six which is my best ever result in the longer race so that was amazing um second race it went as expected the fast guys came through i fell down the pack a bit i had a bit of contact with bruno fell behind my teammate and then had to catch my teammate teammate up but i never quite got him at the end but good points overall tonight yes yeah yeah not not bad uh you know it was tough it was challenging did did you like seeing Bathurst on the schedule, or did you maybe have a little little streak of fear when you saw it? Oh, definitely a streak of hate, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, the track is not suited to single seater cars, that's for sure, because um, the nature of the, how bumpy it is and the in undulation, it uh, it's more suited to uh, uh, GT3 cars or whatever. Right, and Phil talked about the many landmines out there for you guys to find in this car. That makes it pretty tricky. Uh, um, but hey, listen, you had a good run today. I listen. Got to ask you, uh, real, real quick. I'm going to get off racing just real quick. Conor McGregor or Floyd Mayweather? There, go. Uh, well, <laughs> probably, probably McGregor. Actually, okay. If McGregor He's, gets a big punch in, right? You'll knock him out. Evan, a no. fan of the puncher's chance. Right. You heard it here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Good yep. good one there, Evan. Yep. Good. All right. Well, hey, listen, uh, We, as Soup likes to call it, the Suzuka there, the origami pretzel. We head over there next. Uh, are the boys ready? Uh, oh, yes. Um, in fact, I don't know if you noticed, but AOR now has a, a Ferrari and Ford Championship League going on Wednesday nights now. And uh, we were at Suzuka on Wednesday night, so um, it's kind of a bit boring going back to the same track, but I've um, got the experience. So last season, Suzuka was my best. I got my best results at Suzuka last season, so uh, hopefully I'll go well there again. All right. Well, I hope I hope it definitely does. We'll see you next week, Evan. I'll see you next Thursday at practice. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see you then. All right, buddy. That's Evan and Ray. Good points day for him and the team today. Uh, he'll finish 14th here in the feature race. Soup, a great day indeed here at Bathurst. Absolutely. And let's thank everybody at the Apex Online Racing guys for organizing the Formula 1 2.0 League and for all the members who supported this broadcast. We know there'll be a lot of choices when you fly. Thanks for flying GSRC. Thanks to the companies, equipment, and software that you see on the screen right now that we use on the broadcast. And the original music if you heard today is thanks to Eric Eckholm and Casey Lalonde. See the screen for how to contact each of them. The AOR returns next week, Friday, June 23rd, for round two from Suzuka. GSRC will be there to bring you all the action. We hope you join us for more information about the Global Sim Racing Channel. Your best bet is to go right there, globalsimracingchannel.com. You can also find us on Twitter, at GSR Channel. And Facebook, just type in Global Sim Racing Channel, all one word. We'll pop right up there for you. Check us out in social media. And now on behalf of the man whose voice you just heard, Sean Ambrose, our director, Amjid Yaman, and our camera artist, Dougie Beard, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.